Yo, 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 what it do? What it be, y'all? It's your boy, Agent A-N-T, coming to y'all, repping the spell block agency. And a couple months ago, I made a video talking about how the NFL's CBA with the players was going to expire, and the XFL was going to take advantage of the potential lockout, and there was going to be legitimate competition in professional football again. I, I was wrong. I'm going to just get out that I was fucking dead wrong. <laughs> the XFL 2.0 is officially dead. The coronavirus has essentially depleted any chance of the NFL lasting longer than one season. And tragically, it didn't even see a whole season thanks to the pandemic. But the, my prediction that we would see a lockout was just like all the way off. Like, we still had another whole year before they even had to sign it, and, man, they just was like, oh, y'all gonna put a deadline, even though we have another year before it expires? Well, we gotta, we gotta sign. And, it, <laughs> man, the NFLPA is looking real trash right now, but it looks like the NFL really has the best chance to be the only sport that won't be affected by the pandemic, too, or at least they'll be the least affected since things are looking to be like they're at least starting to be getting back to normal by then so really the nfl is flying higher than ever right now especially with the draft being the most viewed in nfl history and the new cba lasting till 2030 i don't see the nfl slowing down even with the pandemic they might be the only sport on unless the other leagues figure their shit out first or i mean unless the other leagues be like oh well, we're actually going to play instead of, you know, caring about our players or something. I don't know. It, it goes back and forth whether or not, you know, because people want to see sports, but at the same time, you know, do you want to risk people and player safety by, you know, being the, the first sport on and being, you know, pretty much the test dummy, you know, how does that make you look? But, hey, this is, this is America. We, we ain't no bitches, so, uh... Even though, you know, it's looking like the pandemic won't slow the NFL down. Um, it, it slowed down pretty much everything else. <laughs> Especially the XFL. And I, I think because of how the XFL just did and how they fared, I don't see another startup league. Even, what did they try to, they tried to restart the USFL or some shit like that. They had another one right before the XFL that folded a few months prior. And, I mean, look at the XFL flopped. I mean, they didn't even flop, really. They were getting a fan base going. People were watching them. But this pandemic just shattered any hope they had of being viable. Or, you know, they didn't have the money to support you know, being around through a pandemic, so, the NFL, the only thing that I could see is the NFL literally called in a plague to stop their competition, <laughs> you know, I don't know how anyone can compete with that, but, <laughs> for real though, I, I do see the NFL maybe starting a 10 or 12 team minor league, maybe, in the future, after seeing how successful the XFL could have been and seeing how well the NBA G League and minor league baseball draws and helps develop talent, I mean, I don't see really why they couldn't, you know? And if they do that, then I'd say maybe cut the NFL draft by two rounds and give those sixth and seventh round players to the G League draft pool or something. Just, you know, throwing that out there, spitballing, really. But... I honestly don't know why the NFL never put more into the CFL or started a minor league after seeing how well the G League and minor league basket, uh, baseball was re received. Excuse me, but I mean, I'm sure college football makes enough money and kind of works as a development league, even though the rules are different. It's not a mix of vets and rookies. It's all kind of like college kids, but I don't know. It, it makes makes hella money. So if it works, I understand not wanting to fix something that's not broken. But earlier I mentioned the CBA, which was the main reason I thought the XFL would have a chance, at least for 
for a season to get their foot in the ground. But like I've been saying, unfortunately, the COVID pandemic hit. The NFL signed the CBA, approving a 17-game season and one more playoff team for each conference, meaning the best teams may not get a first-round buy anymore. So again, I'll admit I was completely wrong about there being any kind of trouble or the NFL being in any kind of trouble or having any kind of competition in the near future. But, but, I will say that I was kind of right about the WWE having serious competition with AEW, especially with the recent layoffs in WWE. Now, if y'all go back to either, you know, my Why Wrestling Won't Have Another Video, boom, or Why the NFL Might Be in Trouble video, I talk about if AEW or New Japan could score some big name talent like Rusev, Zack Ryder, Kurt Hawkins, maybe even Heath Slater, make the most out of their talents, and AEW could be a viable threat in the next year or two. So really, if AEW is smart, this is how they play this. And yes, this is purely me fantasy booking. And you're not a real wrestling fan if you've never done it. I'm not saying this is what they should do. I'm saying this is what I would do if I was trying to compete with the WWE and make the most money. So, if I was the AEW brass, if I was Cody Rhodes, what I would immediately do is do whatever I could to sign Rusev, Michael McGillicuddy, and Kurt Angle. Okay? You could have... And I'll even throw Eric Rowan in there. Because you could have Rowan feud or join the Dark Order with Luke Harper. You know, uh, changing Rusev's name and gimmick really might be hard. But if they give him a shoot gimmick where he mocks his old gimmick kind of... It could work. And you could literally put Kurt Angle anywhere. Backstage, um, have him manage somebody, have him be um, a surprise authority figure. or may- You could even have, a, you know, since it's an upstart company, you can have Kurt Angle play an investor. You know, have, you know, kind of like a leadership role as an investor. You know, he owns a certain stock or company and he wants things done a certain way. Type shit. There's so many things you could do with Kurt Angle. He's so talented. Um, and he's such a character. Uh, they just recently released another name I brought up too. Like I said, Curtis Axel, Michael McGillicuddy, whatever you want to uh, call him, Mr. Perfect Son. Has he been given the best chances? No. But I think he is athletically talented. I think if you give him the chance to kind of just be himself and cut some, some really good promos, which may, maybe he's not a talker. Maybe he could be a muscle guy. Maybe he's... I haven't really seen a lot of Michael McGillicuddy or uh, Curtis Axel, Mr. Perfect Son, whatever you want to call him. They never really gave him a shot. And he has a great look. They gave him a, an Intercontinental Championship run. Uh, they Cody Rhodes is great friends with Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder, they could... If they brought in Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins, they have history there. Uh... If you sign Mr. Perfect Son, I like I said, I haven't seen a lot of what he can do. But I figure if he's anywhere near the talent that Mr. Perfect was, or even his his dad, Larry the Axe Henny, who was a phenomenal wrestler, and Mr. Perfect, one of the greatest characters of all time, one of the greatest Intercontinental Champ, mid-card. He was a, a mid-card Hall of Famer, no cap. He's up there with Razor Ramon, in my opinion. But yeah, he was never given a chance to shine. And maybe with AEW, if they give him, you know, a chance with, you know, Zack Ryder or, you know, put him on a card with, uh, what is his name? M- MJP or something like that. I-, I-, I don't know. But yeah, th- this is the prime opportunity that AEW was looking for and it happened sooner than they expected on a separate note because of the pandemic so you had the NFL kind of gain 
<laughs> in more ways than one. And then now you have WWE possibly you know, having more competition to deal with because they couldn't hoard talent in this pandemic because that's what they were. They were hoarding talent. They, they weren't using everybody. They st- I still don't think they're using some of the main guys to their full potential. I think Shinsuke Nakamura has been vastly underused. Vastly underused in WWE. I have not seen one Shinsuke Nakamura match where I have gone, wow, this guy... This is this guy is a a great worker, you know. Like this is believe, you know. And he was supposed to be strong style. He's supposed to do kicks and all that. But I feel like he his style doesn't mesh well with WWE's kind of production theatrical style, which just may just be my opinion. I feel like if Shinsuke Nakamura was in New Japan. He, him and Kenny Omega could have instant classics if they weren't already. I'm not. I'm not really hip on New Japan. I'm not gonna cap with y'all, but a lot of guys in WWE could be utilized better elsewhere. And I think now we're gonna see um, if they can be better utilized elsewhere. They're actually gonna get that opportunity because now, more than ever, you have AEW. You have a New Japan, you have Ring of Honor, and all of them have not the the TV deals that WWE has, but they have TV deals. They're on TV. People are watching. They're getting views. People are getting paid. They're getting advertising. They're getting sponsors. There's money out there. So it, it, it's looking real scary for WWE out here, especially because they're kind of. It, it's kind of on them. They're the ones who wanted to hoard all this talent. They released uh, Drake Maverick and Mike and Maria Kanellis. Uh, they, they're a tandem in itself. That could be, you know, great for the mid card. Drake Maverick, I feel like, could even win, you know, the AEW World Champion. If they, if they treat him right or if they give him a good enough gimmick, Drake Maverick. He could actually do some. He has the look. He has everything, in my opinion, that it would take athletically to be a world champion. But I, I don't know. I feel like a lot of guys in WWE don't get. Um, they're not allowed to cut good promos because they have their promos written for them. So maybe we'll see a lot of these guys get a chance to shine and you know say some things that they could never say in WWE, which is really exciting. And. Like I said, this is the prime opportunity AEW was looking for to snag some former WWE talent. And if they play their cards right, they could really be up there with WWE and New Japan in terms of overall popularity and talent-wise. Now, I don't know what their current financial situation is, but like I said, if they could get three to five guys, Zack Ryder, Kurt Hawkins, Eric Rowan, Kurt Angle, Michael McGillicuddy, I didn't even mention Al Anderson and Gallows because I'm just assuming they're going back to Japan. But they would help the tag team division too. The WWE isn't in trouble yet. But like I said, they could be. Especially The trouble is brewing. Especially if AEW or New Japan capitalizes and does a new... If they could do a new age storyline and actually do it better than WCW did. Not have it run stale. Not have the back the backstage politics ruined the gimmicks and the payoffs at pay-per-views and shit like that. This <laughs> AEW could be a threat, like a viable threat. But until any of that happens, the WWE ain't going to worry about nothing. And obviously, the NFL has nothing to worry about. So if you're an NFL fan and not a wrestling fan or vice versa, I'm a huge fan of both. So I figured I might as well kill two birds with one video (laughs) so i hope y'all enjoyed my thoughts on the xfl's demise the nfl cba and wwe's recent layoffs and aew or new japan's possible capitalization on it but if i may i'd like to point out that in my why the nfl might be in trouble i mentioned the fact that nfl players still don't have guaranteed contracts but i recently learned 
baseball and basketball players only get guaranteed contracts because individual players fought for them. And since NFL players refused to fight for them and honestly didn't even put up a fight in that BS CBA, they they deserve any money they get since they don't want to fight for more. <laughs> That's just my opinion. I don't want to hear an NFL player complain about what they get paid for the next 10 years at least. Or if they do, I want them to see or go straight to the NFL Players Association, join it, become active. Because for the next 10 years, yeah, y'all get more money, but we'll see if it's really even worth it in the end, really. Because y'all did not fight for shit. So, anyways, I I hope y'all enjoyed the video. If y'all did, leave a like or comment. Uh, some sports topics I should probably cover in the future. You know, leave a comment on some of the, you know, upcoming football. Will they bring the NBA back? Maybe some I'll cover here in the near future. But uh, go ahead and subscribe. And by God, ring the damn bell so you don't miss none of the big shit I got popping or the hot content I got dropping. So stay tuned. Follow me on Twitter at A-N-T underscore 303 so you don't miss none of my videos, tweets, or streams. It's been your boy, Agent A-N-T, repping the spell block agency. Be safe out there, y'all. Don't get smoked. I'm out. Enjoy this dub I took week one. Fuck the Raiders. (laughs) I'm out. Peace.